now finally people can have on their resume 10 years experience with Kubernetes. Yay. <laughs> oh crap, has it been that long? <laughs> 10 years old is not something I thought we would ever have to worry about. I'm surprised that it's been 10 years. It doesn't feel like it's been 10 years. Holy cow, we moved the industry in the first three years and it's only kept moving since. For a project like Kubernetes to be turning 10 years old, it really says something about how, not just how popular it is, how useful it is, the staying power that it has, its ability to grow and change and not be overtaken by some new thing that somebody just spun up. Kubernetes has exceeded my wildest expectations uh, in terms of adoption and the ways that people are using it, the, the value that they found in it, uh, would never have predicted this. If I look back, it drove a remarkable change in the way people designed web applications and in what they expected of their web applications. Before Kubernetes, I think it was difficult to be able to scale up your applications as quickly as it is now possible to do. I think the toughest times were really at the first two years, uh, where there was a lot of competition from other solutions. It wasn't obvious that Kubernetes will win containers war. For me, those were the, the sort of darkest periods when I was really questioning, were we doing the right thing? Were our instincts correct? Uh, would we be better pivoting the project to um, build on top of something else um, or you know, choosing which container runtime to lean into uh, or how to support uh, things like Rocket as a good example? Um, I think a lot about those and how things might have been different if we'd made different decisions. A fun moment for us was the moment that all cloud providers had a Kubernetes managed service. And we had bets internally. Uh, how long will it take? Uh, and it actually happened sooner than I thought. Every cloud provider now has Kubernetes. Entire companies have been formed around Kubernetes, around just like Kubernetes networking or Kubernetes monitoring or Kubernetes security. It really enlarges the pie. Open source enlarges the pie for everybody. There's so much work to be done. <laughs> we all see that no matter what your job is, there's always more work to be done. And a lot of folks who work in open source are very uh, passionate about what they do. And so they often take on too much and it can cause problems. Right now, the biggest problem in open source today is trying to figure out how to move open source forward in a sustainable way that doesn't burn out maintainers, that corporations understand is that open source is free like a puppy, not free like sunshine. And so you still have to feed it and groom it and engage with it as you're building it. Kubernetes will not be done until no one's using it. And between here and there, and I hope it's a very long time, between here and there, we have to maintain it. We've crossed the first chasm. Is, is the way I think of it. Um, there's a new chasm, and that's the AI space, and the, the next decade will be entirely different than the past. There is uh, the challenges of large language models. Those type of workloads, uh, container images, are bigger than anything we've seen before. Uh, the way we've been uh, thinking about the system and the uh, boundaries are not relevant anymore, okay? We need to scale things faster, bigger. Uh, and actually, it's, you know, being a platform engineer or working in infrastructure, this is like the best time. So if you're considering, like, is this the right place to be at? Uh, I think that working on those kind of challenges is uh, amazing. When I think about the next 10 years of Kubernetes, I think it is critical that Kubernetes caters to the advancements in generative AI, that it becomes, um, you know, the platform that companies and startups and enterprises that are building generative AI applications, they host their workloads, their generative AI workloads on Kubernetes. I think that's, that's imperative. AI changes a lot of things. The workloads for AI are very different. The needs from a system are very different. The way we manage AI workloads pretty different. They don't fit the archetype that we were built for. Kubernetes already has a strong track record showing that it has the ability to adapt to environments, to workloads, to use cases. And it'll need to continue to do that. The companies who are building products and businesses on the back of Kubernetes, uh, the cloud providers and others, we can't take our eye off the ball. 
hire great people, let them work on Kubernetes, let them maintain Kubernetes, even if it's sometimes not obvious how their work directly relates to your top line revenue. If you're building on Kubernetes, you are invested in keeping Kubernetes healthy and relevant. I want to thank all the new folks and the contributors, you know, just you know, thinking about Paris, which was the biggest uh, KubeCon ever, and seeing so many new people and so many innovation and rich conversations and people being open-minded makes me so happy and so excited uh, about what is possible in the next 10 years. <laughs>